Hello and welcome to this brief introduction to WTSA. We'll be looking today at the purpose, the structure and the processes related to the Assembly and the goal is to make all delegates uh, capable of following and participating effectively in the Assembly. Um, the processes that we'll be looking at today are specific to WTSA but can be generalised to the other conferences. No prior knowledge of assemblies or conferences is necessary to follow the training today, but uh, hopefully there is going to be something in it for everybody um, and, uh, and we can all learn. As you should know by now, uh, WTSA 24 will be held in New Delhi from the 15th to the 24th of October this year, in just a few weeks from the recording of this session, preceded by the Global Standards Symposium on the 14th, and uh, running in parallel with that will be a series of very interesting and diverse side events. All of that information is available by, um, uh, by visiting the WTSA 24 website. I'd like to recap what the objectives are for today's session. Uh, the first is to provide, just briefly, essential information for newcomers to make sure that you can avoid um, known issues on, on day one. We'll look at the purpose and the structure of WTSA 24, which follows very similar to previous assemblies and conferences. We'll look at the specific document types and proposal types. We'll then look in a little more detail into the proposal workflows, what happens to a proposal when it's submitted, how it's processed by the various groups, and what the decision-making processes are. We'll look briefly at the need for document coordination and our role in WTSA docs control to support you. And then finally, we'll look at uh, document access and tracking so that before and during the assembly, you're able to quickly get to the resources and particularly the documents that you need. So essential information for newcomers is very similar for WTSA as it is for study group meetings. So those of you who have participated in study group meetings before should be fairly familiar with this process. Um, the first idea is to set up a user account. This could be done by anybody. You can go onto the uh, ITU webpage and follow the links to set up an ITU user account. To be given member-only access, you would need to have your affiliation to a certain organization approved. I won't go into detail about how that's done. There are detailed guides on the TIES user account uh, webpage at ITU. Uh, this should be your first step. If you don't already have an account, then make this a priority. Another good resource will be the WTSA 24 website. The link is shown on the screen here. There is a wealth of information. It's very well organized and it'll take you to the uh, uh, associated information related to GSS and the side events and um, all of the logistical and practical information you need uh, to participate effectively at the assembly. One of the main links is the circulars. These are uh, formal letters. Uh, these describe the assembly arrangements. They cover the invitations for the various uh, delegations and so on. That's all available on the, the homepage of the WTSA website. Registration, I can't stress this enough. It's done electronically and it is mandatory. It's available via the website. It does require um, a user account correctly validated and it can take some time because focal point approval is needed. So I recommend very strongly that you set up an account and register as early as possible. And then we'll look in a little more detail today about meeting documents. So this is formal meeting documents, informal working documents, and various sources of information, background information that you can access. And we'll look all, at all of that in detail as we go through. Um, the web page is very well organized and you'll see quick links to the most used resources directly from the home page. So hopefully you'll find it easy to navigate. If you don't, then there is contact information to, um, to get the information that you need uh, on the website. So turning now to the purpose of WTSA 24, which is largely the same as it is for all assemblies. Uh, the first uh, objective is to set the structure and the vision for the next study period, the study period being the four years between WTSAs, that's the World Telecommunication Standardization Assembly. Next is to express this vision through a coherent set of resolutions, uh, so this is WTSA resolutions, and what we call the A series of recommendations. Those are the recommendations or international standards that describe the working methods of the uh, telecommunication standardization sector. We will also establish the study group mandates, uh, update them in many cases or create them afresh if needed, and appoint the chairs of the various study groups. 
And finally, the aim is to publish the draft proceedings on the final day of the assembly in all six languages. The proceedings being the collection of texts, the approved resolutions, recommendations and various reports as the primary outcomes of the assembly. All of that will be available in all six languages, um, hopefully uh, as soon as possible after the, uh, the closing of the assembly. For those of you who have attended study group meetings in the past, it's important to understand how the assembly differs from study group meetings. So the first is the decision-making processes. Because all member states are present in the room, they have full decision-making authority. This means that they don't need to go through traditional uh, approval processes or alternative approval processes. They can go directly to decisions in the plenary sessions. The Assembly also differs in terms of the number and the type of participants. We expect something like 1,500 participants, very senior people, as well as people who are actively engaged day to day in the work of the study groups. So a very diverse group. Some people are familiar with our working methods and some are not. The subject matter, as I've already mentioned, is very high level. Uh, we're looking at resolutions and working methods and not so much looking at the technical standardization work, which happens at the level of study group meetings. And finally is the um, added benefit, but also the added complexity of working in multiple languages. Um, ITU works in Arabic, Chinese, English, French, Russian and Spanish. Um, the spoken language is normally English. When interpretation is provided, it will be provided in all six languages. Uh, and the same for the documentation. To the extent possible, we'll provide all documents in all languages. There are some limitations on that and we'll describe that a little later in this briefing. Turning now to the structure of WTSA, by default, all participants are invited to what are called plenary sessions. So this is potentially up to 1500 people in a room, all discussing at the same time. And that is the default location for all discussions and decisions. However, there are five statutory committees that are created on day one, as well as any subgroups that are considered necessary by the assembly. Um, these are all mandated, or the committees are all mandated in resolution one. These are Committee 1, which is a very select group of senior leaders who form the steering committee. They make sure that the, the assembly delivers on its uh, mandate and it manages time effectively. Committee 2 is the Budget Control Committee. It will look at the financial implications of any decision made at any level in the assembly and make recommendations to adapt uh, to ensure that uh, what is being set out for the coming four years is achievable within the available finances. The two most substantive groups are Committee 3, which focuses on working methods, and Committee 4, which looks at the work programme and organisation. Um, these committees are mandated in Resolution 1, but um, if history is anything to go by, it's likely that the committees will create two working groups under each of the committees. Under Committee 3, we're likely to form Working Group 3A, which will look at Resolution 1, uh, a series recommendations and so on, the working methods. And Working Group 3B will look at working methods related to cooperation and collaboration with other partners. Under Committee 4, again, we're likely to see two working groups. Um, working Group 4A will look at study group specific resolutions and also look at possible restructuring. And Working Group 4B would look at thematic resolutions, including bridging the standardization gap and so on. All of this will depend on the uh, contributions received and the assignment of work as done during the opening plenary. So there may be some need to adapt given that um, early indications are that Committee 4 will be very heavily loaded. And so it may be necessary to do some load balancing. The fifth of the statutory committees is a rather special one. It's called Committee 5, the Editorial Committee. Its purpose is to perfect the text of draft provisions We'll learn what that means shortly, and to ensure correct alignment between all six languages. So Committee 5 has a special role. It's outside the um, uh, central work that's done by the uh, delegates, and we'll see how Committee 5 fits into the, the process shortly. And then finally, there, are, there is an option to create informal groups. So these could be ad hoc groups, um, informal drafting groups, informal consultations as necessary, and each of these groups can be created under the plan COM or working group level. Turning now to a very high level view of the flow of work during the assembly. As I mentioned, the plenary session is the default location for decision making. 
it will be fed by each of the five committees. So committee one and two both report directly to plenary on matters that arise, uh, each according to its mandate. Committee three and four will meet regularly during the two weeks, and they will report directly to the plenary to describe progress and raise any issues that need to be discussed or agreed at a higher level. One of the main outcomes of committees three and four will be draft provisions, that is updates or new resolutions and A series recommendations. This is one of the main outputs of the assembly, and these will be passed through the editorial committee on their way to decision-making at the plenary level. It's very important that the flow of work is managed because Committee 5 only has limited resources. If Committee 5 is, does not have time to check the documents before they're sent to plenary, for example, at the end of the assembly when time is running out, it is possible to bypass the editorial committee. However, this can be very problematic and it should be avoided at all costs, but the option remains should it be needed. This is a typical time plan for WTSA. The, as of the date of recording, the actual time plan for WTSA 24 is not available. So rather than create confusion, what we've used here is the time plan that was used for WTSA 20, actually held in 2022. Just to give you some idea of the, um, the structuring of the, of the time. As with last time, GSS will be held on the first Monday. Um, so the first day of the assembly will actually be Tuesday, the 15th of October. Um, as you'll see here, there's a formal head of delegation meeting followed by an opening ceremony, followed by open discussion at plenary level. So the whole of the first day will be discussed and uh, will be spent discussing high level issues. From the second day onwards, each of the committees will meet either at the committee level or one of its uh, working groups will meet. Um, this will typically leave a little bit of open space between sessions. Uh, the morning sessions are typically 9.30 to 12.30. Afternoon is, 12, is 14.30 to 5, 17.30. Um, and outside that time, it is possible to convene informal discussions. And as you'll see, Committee 5 is scheduled to meet in the evenings when the, the rest of the work is done to perfect the text of any resolutions or recommendations that are ready for further consideration. What I draw your attention to here is that there are never more than two major sessions in parallel and that any meetings of a committee or its subgroups don't happen in parallel. They only happen in sequence. So we can see on the Wednesday, we see committee four is meeting um, late morning, early afternoon, and then working group 4A is meeting late afternoon. And this is fairly typical. Turning now to the second week, there is very limited time um, during the second week. Because of the decision-making processes, plenary takes up a lot of the schedule. Um, and uh, it's very important to manage time effectively. You'll see as well that Committee 5 is extremely busy um, during the assembly and immediately after the closing plenary in resolving issues. Um, the last day of the assembly this time is planned for the, uh, the Thursday, not the Wednesday as it was last time, and will in any case be followed by leadership training for the newly elected um, study group chairs on the, uh, the Friday following the assembly. As I've mentioned, a lot of the white space that you see here will be filled with informal groups, including ad hoc groups. Some terminology is needed to understand the document types. Um, we talk a lot about formal documents, um, and the, the word document here is capitalized. Um, Documents in this context are translated documents uh, available in all six languages. These are generally considered at the plenary level, so in uh, meetings where everyone is present. In the majority of cases, these documents contain proposals. They also contain reports and other content. They're actually published in the contribution series, even though not all of the documents here are contrib contributions from member states. But this is the series we use for the formal documents. The majority of proposals coming into the assembly are called common proposals. These are documents that have been agreed at, by one of the six regional preparatory groups. Um, these are published um, under documents 35 to 40, and each proposal is published independently as a separate document um, as an addendum to each of those uh, documents 35 to 40. We will have a look at that later on. Alongside the main document series, we also have the temporary document series. These are abbreviated as TD or DT in French. Commonly, you'll hear them referred to as DTs throughout the assembly. These are um, documents typically 
discussed at committee level. When they contain proposals, they'll be translated. But if they're not, if they don't contain proposals, they are unlikely to be translated. There are three other document series. These are never translated. Uh, one is the admin series called ADMs. These only contain agendas. So this is strongly recommended if you want to follow a particular work item through its evolution, then uh, you can look at the agenda and see what topics will be discussed and the approximate timing of those discussions. Information documents, INF, INF. Um, this is for general information. Typically, this has been rarely used, but it's likely to be used this time for background information containing documents already published somewhere else, just to give quick and easy access to the content. And finally, there are working documents. These are informal texts. They're not translated like the others. Um, and they're used by the working groups, ad hoc groups, and so on um, as, um, as working tools. Um, and then they'll be converted into one of the other document types before being discussed at a higher level, either the committee or the uh, plenary. We try to avoid confusing terminology as much as possible, but I would like to introduce you to some key terms. The first is contribution, in this case with a capital C. So this would be a formal written document to either WTSA or a study group from one or more members. In the case of WTSA, it may or it may not contain proposals. Typically, they do contain proposals. A provision is just a high level reference to uh, resolutions, a series recommendations, or the one opinion currently at play in, um, in the T-sector. A proposal is contained within a contribution. It's a member request to do one of th four things. This can be to modify, retain, add, or delete an existing provision. A common proposal, as I've already mentioned, is a proposal coming from um, one of the regional preparatory groups. So these documents have already achieved a high level of consensus before being submitted to the assembly and therefore carry more weight than a, country, than a proposal coming from an individual country. The proceedings, as I've already mentioned, is a collection of the outputs of WTSA, including meeting reports, resolutions, and ACR recommendations. Translation is different from interpretation in that translation refers to the written word and interpretation covers the spoken word. We also back this up with captioning. This is a live rendering of a meeting, meeting debate. Uh, it can also be archived and it can help delegates to grasp the discussions. This is traditionally very useful for persons with disabilities, but it's actually very helpful for all delegates, including those who are multitasking, those who didn't hear what was said the first time through. So captioning is a resource provided for all of the major meetings and uh, you're encouraged to, to use this uh, to help follow what's going on. Proposal types, I mentioned that there are four different types of proposals. The first and by far the most common is MOD. This is a proposal to modify an existing provision. So this means to add, delete, or, or adapt existing words and figures. Because it's very important to see what is being proposed for change, um, track changes should be used in the Word documents. The next type is add. This is to add a new provision. So this would be a draft new resolution, a series recommendation, or opinion. Because this is new text, there's no, new, no need to use track changes. SUP is a proposed to, proposal to delete or suppress an existing resolution, recommendation, or opinion. Again, um, because there are no changes being suggested, there's no need to use track changes. What is more important is to use the, ra the reasons or the rationale for the deletion to be given. And finally, NOC. In this case, NOC with an underline. This is a statement by one or mem more members that no change is required to the, um, to the provision. This means it's already serving its purpose and the assembly would be better um, advised to spend time on other topics. And because there's never uh, an ideal situation, we do have another category called other. So this could be used for general discussion about uh, a strategy for change or strategy for the vision for, uh, w for WTSA and the coming study period. So the majority of proposals are submitted under one of the first four and other is used for exception cases. Just to help you navigate the documents, it's worth having a look at the cover page of a typical proposal. You'll see on the top right hand corner, you'll see the document number and frequently you'll see the addendum number in brackets, uh, the date and the original language. You'll see the submitter of the proposal and what it relates to, in this case, resolution 20. 
The abstract is a very important part of the document. There are, um, there are a lot of inputs to WTSA and a strong abstract will help put the right eyes on your document to make sure that um, the right people see it and pay attention to it. Looking at the substance of a mod proposal, the first thing you'll see is this rather confusing code in the top left hand corner. It is important that you're able to decode it and I'll explain how you do that. Um, in this case, we see this is a mod. This is the action type uh, to modify an existing provision. The next part is EUR. This refers to the European Common Proposals from uh, CEPT. The next part is a number code. So slash 38A6 refers to document 38 addendum 6. So you know where, if you need to refer back to the original source, uh, this will tell you where to go. And the slash one is very common at the end of these codes. It means it's the first proposal within this document. And for the vast majority of, me of assembly documents, um, there is only one proposal. Um, we'll see later an exception to that rule, but typically you'll see the number slash one. As I mentioned, for mod files, it's important to show all changes in revision marks relative to the known baseline text. Um, that will be managed by the Secretariat um, supporting the chair during the course of the assembly. Um, but for proposals coming in from members, please take this into account and use the enforced version of provisions as the baseline for your texts. Looking now at adds, knocks and sups, you'll see the same code being used in the top left hand corner. You'll see there's no need for revision marks. In this case, for a knock and sup, uh, there's no need to include the contents of the resolution because the proposal is either to keep it exactly as it is or to suppress it in its, in its totality. And for add proposals, there is no need for revision marks because all of the text is new. Turning now to the flow of work throughout the assembly. Um, there are many sources of proposals, um, not just from members, but including member states. There can also be co-signatories, so specific countries may come together and submit together. More commonly, the regional preparatory groups, the six regional preparatory groups, have already prepared their proposals at the um, regional level, and they submit them as common proposals to the Assembly. The Secretary General of ITU, the TSB Director and TSB, can also submit inputs as can the study groups, and for this purpose we include um, the Telecommunication Standardization Advisory Group, or TSAG. They all provide input reports from the past study period and recommendations for the future. And sector members as well are permitted to uh, submit documents. So many different sources of proposals. The vast majority uh, that are discussed in depth will be coming from the regional preparatory groups and from the study groups. So the aim of this briefing is to simplify um, and help understand the, uh, the work. At a conceptual level, the work is very simple. It gets difficult quite quickly simply because of the number of documents being considered, but the concepts at play are straightforward. So the first is our work is driven as always by contributions. So a proposal from a member or a um, common proposal will be submitted to WTSA where by default it will be considered by the plenary. The plenary will make a decision, first of all, to set up committees and working groups, and then to assign each of the proposals to uh, one of the committees. And the committee may then sub-assign it to a working group ad hoc or other group. So once the ad hoc group, for example, has met, they'll provide um, a document that has reached a certain level of consensus to the committee. It may be discussed further. And when the text is ready, it's then sent forward for approval. This is done, as we'll see later, through a series of texts which are sent to the editorial committee. The, ma the majority of documents are then sent forward for approval, but in some cases issues may be found, in which case the document could be returned to the committee for clarification. It will then be resubmitted to the editorial committee and then onwards to the plenary where we would hope uh, uh, approval will be reached. And basically that's what happens. Looking in more detail, there are important steps to understand as we go through that um, simplified uh, workflow. The first is a concept it's useful to understand, which is all of the proposals from the start to the end are managed in a database. To begin with, uh, at this stage, we have all of the enforced provisions. So this is the outputs of WTSA 20, plus any updates to the A series recommendations that have happened since WTSA 20. All of those are available for searching inside a database. 
As a baseline for proposals, uh, the database can output a Word file, and then a member state can come up with an idea for how to modify uh, that document, which will then be shown in this case for a mod, uh, shown in revision marks relative to the inline te uh, the um, baseline text. Once it's ready and it's gone through its necessary approval process at the national or regional level, the document will be submitted to WTSA through what's called WTSA Docs Control. This is the central coordinating team uh, that handle all of the documentation from the start to the finish. After initial review for validity checking, the document will be submitted um, to a web page as received. So this means that there's immediate oversight of exactly what has been sent in from uh, legitimate sources of uh, proposals. The documents will then go through an even more rig rigorous uh, quality checking and will then be published in the official document series for consideration by the plenary. Then, as we saw in the simplified model, plenary will then assign, for example, resolution one will be assigned to committee three. So, and this would apply to all of the uh, provisions uh, based on the uh, contributions received. So turning now to the work within committee three, uh, committee three will meet and it will start to look at all of the documents submitted on any topic under its mandate. So in this case, conceptually, we have two um, proposals on resolution one. One is coming from uh, Europe, from CEPT, and the other is coming from China. So the chair in consultation with the secretariat will set an agenda, will table discussions. And in this case, to keep things simple, we'll assume that all of the proposals made are totally acceptable for the participants in committee three. And in both cases, all of the changes are accepted, nice and simple. Um, the committee will then pick one of the two documents that was an input and use that as a baseline text. So in this case, we'll take just arbitrarily, we'll take the European Common Proposal is used as a baseline text. And then the Secretariat staff will transfer the revision marks from the China proposal into the combined text. And like this, the new document shows all proposed changes relative to uh, whatever is currently in force. So committee three will do this for all of the um, provisions under its mandate, and they'll come up with a series of word files um, each one containing the agreed text at the committee level. These are then consolidated into what's called a series of text. So it's a term of art series of text. It just means it's one word file with multiple um, proposals in it. This is the document that, this is the document that is sent to the editorial committee. Uh, they'll analyze it, perfect the text, align the languages. And if they find any issues, they'll go back to the committee for clarification or review. Once the committee is ready, they'll resubmit through the editorial committee and the text will be submitted to plenary for approval. So this is a more detailed view of what we initially saw, just adding a little more detail about the, um, the steps taken and some of the terminology used um, so that you can, uh, you can follow the work effectively. There is a need for quality control, coordination and timeliness. These are all uh, interlinked. Um, there are many stakeholders involved in this work, uh, not least the plenary, but also the committees and working groups. There's EDCOM, we've already talked about. We have the translation service, which is provided by ITU, and equally the interpretation service. We have a number of support colleagues who provide the technical support, administrative support, logistics, registration, and so on to uh, help coordinate the work. And of course, there's, there's the members and the delegations that make up the decision-making uh, groups. That's a lot of quality control uh, to be handled, and so that's the role of DOCS Control. So we're here to serve you. We can be approached directly or via the Secretariat, so please do reach out if you have any questions about what we're doing or why we're doing it, if you need any advice on the procedures to be followed or where to access resources. Looking now to accessing the documents, um, there are a number of different channels to see what documents have been submitted to the Assembly. Um, the first one is as received. We mentioned this when we looked at the detailed workflow. Um, these documents are available immediately on receipt, typically the same day or at worst the next day after being received by the submitter. These have not had a thorough quality control, but it is then possible for all uh, delegations to see what's coming in. And uh, we'll have a look in a second how that web page looks. But it is, it is possible to see uh, at a rough level what's being submitted to the assembly. Once the thorough review has been done, all of the documents will be published on the formal documents webpage. 
Um, in order to give quick access to translations, we do have machine translation of all documents as soon as they're published in their formal version. And in many cases, the, formal, the um, uh, machine translated versions will be replaced by an official version as soon as the translation is, is available. We'll look in a second at the proposals management system. I did mention earlier that we have a database for managing the content, and that database is reflected on the website, which helps with searching and filtering, which can be super useful um, as the assembly gets going and the documentation becomes more complicated. And then finally, I want to refer to the Sync application. This is a downloadable app, um, which hooks into the, the database and allows you to download all of the meeting documents that are published. Um, it downloads onto your uh, onto your device, typically your laptop, and it allows you um, offline access. This is particularly useful in the last days before the assembly when delegates are traveling and may want to review documents uh, while they're on a flight. So I strongly recommend downloading and using the Sync application, uh, which is available via the documents page on the WTSA website. Just a quick overview of what each of these resources looks like. Uh, here's the as received um, web page, you'll see the source column. This tells us it's the um, African Telecommun Telecommunication Union has submitted a document. The document title tells you which resolution um, is being submitted on and whether it's a modification, suppression or whatever. And then you can download the, uh, the Word document. This is the formal website. Uh, you can see here at the moment, at the time of recording, only the English versions are available. Uh, in this case, we're looking at the African Common Proposals and we're looking at the various um, addenda, starting with the uh, most recent, uh, 37, uh, but listing them all in order. And on the right side of the screen, you can see the option to uh, create a uh, machine translated version of that document. And this will, as I mentioned, be replaced by the official version once, the, uh, once it comes out of translation. As you can imagine, there's a lot of work to do, and so this may take several days. Our commitment is to have all documents published in all languages uh, before the start of the assembly. And then finally, this is such a powerful tool and only becomes more powerful during the course of the assembly. It's called the Proposal Management System and it allows document tracking. Uh, I'll give you a live demo in a second, but just to orientate you um, around the, uh, the web page, uh, you can use this tool in any of the six languages. You can do a full text search. So if you're interested in e-waste or uh, development, then you can do a search and see all of the provisions where this topic is being discussed. Um, the advanced feature, uh, advanced filtering feature is super powerful. Uh, we'll look at that in a second. And then once you've done your search, whatever you're looking for, you can download the content that you've searched for in Word file uh, format. Towards the bottom, you see the search results. And uh, as we go through the assembly, you can download in English or you can download in all of the available languages. And then you'll see the the same metadata here that we saw on the as received uh, web page. Uh, the two document icons in the bottom left, one is to download the full document, including its header page, cover page, and the second is just an excerpt, which is the substantial content of that document. So each has its benefits and disadvantages, and I'd encourage you to use the tool to, to get used to it. And then you can see the document properties as we go through. To begin with, um, the documents are not assigned to committees. That is done during the opening plenary session. And so the web page will be updated as necessary once the, each of the provisions is associated with a committee. Um, one of my favorite tools I find most useful is the mapping feature. If I were interested in resolution 44 on BSG, I would select resolution 44 here, and that would apply a filter to all of the documents. And then as the assembly proceeds, you can see what happens to each of the proposals and how it's addressed by each of the committees and where it eventually gets sent to um, plenary for a decision. I'd like to give you a quick demo of the WTSA website just to give you an idea where the resources can be found. So once you've navigated to the WTSA homepage, you'll see some quick links along the top and some other quick links down below. We're focusing on documents. If you go here, You've got quick access to some of the resources that we've talked about today. I find it most useful to go to the document resources tab. And here you can have quick access to the as received files, the official documents, and then here, the proposal management system. Here you can see we already have 56 documents um, in the database and therefore available for filtering. To use the filtering features, click here. Um, 
You can use each of these tabs in combination as you wish and reset if you feel the need. Um, and then for mapping, as I just mentioned, if I were interested in uh, resolution 20, I can apply. And here we see that ATU has submitted a mod proposal. Um, so with this, I would encourage you to start using this tool and learn how to navigate around. It can be uh, very effective um, getting you through the assembly. Um, thank you very much for your time. We're here to answer your questions. Our contact details are available on the website and we would welcome contact at any point before, during or even after the assembly. I hope you find, found this useful and I wish you every success um, during the assembly that's coming and I look forward to meeting you in person if we have the opportunity. Thank you.